Hey guys! Got him. Hello everyone, how's it going? Um, welcome to another video. This, uh, I asked you, well I posted on Instagram uh, a couple of days ago and I said YouTube Q&A, another Q&A. Because um, it's been around a month now since my last one. So the thing is, I said like Q and A once a month. I think that keeps the balance quite quite good there. Yeah, so I asked you guys to ask me some questions down in the comments, and uh, there's some good questions in here. I think some really awesome, kind of tricky, hard ones that you've left me here. One thing though, can you notice anything about this video? What can you tell about it? Hey, Frey, Fraser, is that video in 4K? Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, so this video is in 4K, recorded in 4K right now. Um, I don't know. I thought. Just sort of test it out, because quality, I suppose. Yeah, first sit down video in 4K. I'll probably do all my sit down videos in 4K from now on, just because, you know, quality. Right, let's get into the Q&A then. Okay, first question is from Linoli. Linoli? Lino? This is <laughs> such a hard question to start off with. If you had to choose just one lens to use for a photography trip around the world, what would it be and why? Cheers. Wow. Um, I d that's so hard. Probably the, the ideal lens would probably be the 1635 f4 um, by Sony, um, but I don't have that lens. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be the 1635 because it's like you can zoom in and it's wide. It's got quite a good aperture on it. So yeah. So thank you, Lil Lee Linoli. This is this is like a like a whoa. A L X D R James. How has photography changed your life since you started? Wow, that's a question. Um, since I start, since I start, see the thing is, I started photography when I was about 17, 18, like doing it properly, like getting paid for it. I, I don't know, I've always had that kind of feeling inside me that I'm always going to be taking photos, no matter what. And to turn it into something, turn it into something professional is, is like a really cool thing to do. And I always had that vision that I wanted to work for myself. So I think that it's cha changed my life. It's geared me up to sort of start my own way kind of thing. If you if you under, understand that, this this is a good question. Okay, Honza dot Stigeskal. These these usernames. Do you remember your first shot that you're actually proud of? By the way, awesome shot. Thank you. Do you remember your first shot? I mean, as I said, I've been taking photos for, like forever. First shot. Okay, so this is the thing. I my parents had this compact camera. I, don't, I think it was a Panasonic or something like that. Little compact camera. I got a hold of it when I was about 15 years old. So we went on a walk, right? And ever since I've been using that camera. Well, as long as they let me use it. The thing what fascinated me the most was shallow depth of field. I it, it was I kept calling it contrast to, to start off with. Me and my brother, really young, we used to um, use these cameras that our parents had. And we used to call it contrast, but we, <laughs> that's obviously not what we call it. It's called shallow depth of field where um, you get a small amount of detail in focus and then the rest is blurred. We called that contrast. And then when, when we took photos up really close like this and only like the little bit of the... So the phone was in detail there and the rest of the blood, we were like absolutely fascinated. Then we went on a walk and I took this puddle shot, right? It was a puddle shot, like a little puddle in front and then me, mum, no, not me, my brother and mum and the dog, yeah, were walking in the far distance and they were obviously blurred out and the puddle shot was like in the front. I, I don't know if I can find it, I'll put it up if I, if I find it, but that was such an awesome shot and I thought, and I was like, hang on, this, this is awesome, photography is awesome. So that's, that's, I'm proud of that shot which started my like obsession with taking photos. Thank you for that question, very good one. Okay, another question uh, from CC Maybelline. What inspired you to become a photographer? That's, I don't know, these top three questions kind of go in together. What inspired you? I, mean, I can go back to that puddle shot. I mean, what inspired you to become a photographer? As I said, like I've, oh, I've always had that kind of fascination with with taking photos, it just gives that nice feeling to me. Um, and that, you know, as soon as I picked up those cameras and, you know, when I was really young, yes, this is what I want to do. This is this is what I'm interested in. I love taking photos. And if I can turn it into professional, then hey, that's 100%, do you know what I mean? And I guess another thing is back then, it was all like Facebook and, and Bebo and stuff like that. And all these other things where I was taking all these photos, right? Of like landscape and stuff and people were, People, what, what you always saw on Facebook was just people posting really out of focus, blurry, shitty shots of their nights out in London. Obviously, I went out as well. Yeah, I, I, and I couldn't, if I post on Facebook, people would be like, well, this is not really interesting. So it's like the Facebook kind of my friends in, in there. So Instagram came out 
four or five years ago now, I was like, oh my god, this is actually a photo app where you can post your photos and not kind of get judged on it. What inspired you to be a photographer? That, that's kind of like, it, when Instagram came out, yeah, and I was able to post my photos, I thought, yes, this is continuing to be a good thing, continuing to be what I'm interested in, I'm going to keep on posting, keep on taking photos, make this professional, and it just kicked off from there. So Instagram is a very big help there um, with kind of inspiring me and keeping me, keeping my passion up there because I always want to take photos. So that's that. Question from Anatole.Marin. This, I think this is a good question. After five months with this new account, do you regret the old? Most of you know that I completely scrapped my other Instagram account. I mean, I got a very, well compared to, it's not a very big following now compared to the commu community I'm in, but I got quite a big following on that. I got up to about 48,000 followers on that account. I got suggested by Instagram about two years ago now, two, three years ago. Um, so what that means, they put you on a list um, with new users, they open the app and you get recommended to follow, you're on that list. So I grew from about 4,000 followers to about 33,000 in two weeks, right? Because I was on the suggested user list. So Instagram picked me because I thought my account was follow worthy, right? And then after that, I think that, I think that getting suggested is kind of the, it's kind of an anti-climax after a while because in two weeks, if you get 30,000 people following you, most of them are gonna be bots, most of them are gonna be fake followers, and most of them are just gonna follow because of the hell of it. They're not really interested in your stuff. Five, six months ago, I decided to, to, to start a new account because the engagement was getting really, really bad. I had 48,000 followers. I used to get 2,000 likes. I was getting about 700 to 800 on bangers, right? They were bangers. It, t 10 like comments and stuff like this. It, 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 so you could see like Instagram wasn't pushing the account anymore. I mean, nowadays when you post and if it gets really good engagement at the start, it go, it, I think it goes straight to the explore page. You didn't have to try and get to the explore page like you did back then. And nowadays they, they put the feed in the wrong order and stuff like that it's it's it is what it is now you can't really do anything about it but do i regret the other kind probably no because at the moment right now i've gained up to 7,000 followers in five months which is insane thank you guys for following um the engagement on my photos now is double what it was when i had 48,000 followers and i've still got the old one i still i still post like before and after shots on the old one and like other personal stuff on the old one so no i do not regret it okay this is a question from my boy henry sim simons henry simo simons yeah what makes the perfect picture such a wowzers question we um me, if we watched my last q a me and my brother went over this question quite deeply actually because what makes a perfect picture so we sort of said like there's a technical side of it, and then there's like the personal kind of just taking it for, for the story side of it. I mean, technical side, we can say like, I can take a picture of this room, it has to be a shot speed of uh, 180 of a second, it has to be an aperture of f.2, and it has to be an ISO of 500 to 800. That's kind of technically, technically making it like, you can take an exposure reading, and it will give you the settings for your camera room. You can argue that's to take a perfect picture, but me and my brother kind of went through it and we thought, the perfect picture is those kind of like technical settings. They don't, they don't matter anymore um, for stills. So if you, some, some people on Instagram now, they, they post photos where it's heavily contrasted, like the blacks have faded almost too much and it's overexposed and stuff, but that's, that's kind of someone's style. And it kind of represents themselves, their personality and a story within the photo. On Instagram right now, you, you see all these photos. I mean, they're, they're not picture perfect. Some of mine aren't picture perfect. They're all, like, some of mine are overexposed. The, there's, I, put heavy like gradient filters over them to make one side black and stuff. I, th I think photography is getting a lot more creative now, a lot more stylish um, than it was. I mean, y you just used to take a reading and take a photo and if it was properly exposed then yeah, well done, you've done it. But now it's changed so much. So I think what makes the perfect picture is, is how you feel about it and if you're giving off what you want to give off in that picture, the vibe, your style and your edit and what's in the photo where you've been, where you travel to, or even like if it's an object like a bottle of water, at least it's got a representation to yourself. Yeah, so that, that's a very hard question, but that's what my opinion is on that kind of question like that. What makes a perfect picture? No one really cares about technical side anymore for stills. Videography, I mean, there is some key things you have to remember when, you, when you're shooting video. But stills, I mean, obviously if you don't blow out the picture and it's ridiculously overexposed and ridiculously unexposed and all grainy and stuff. But grain, people use grain now. People like grain because they, it's reminiscent of the kind of vintage kind of photography. If you do want to watch uh, what me and my brother said about it, there'll be a link here and you can go check that out. I think I said about the same kind of thing I said in that video. 
He's got another question, Big Man Simo. Uh, what's one thing you wish you could have photographed but didn't have your camera with you? <laughs> the, these questions, guys. Jesus Christ. There has, there has been a lot. Even if I'm just going to town, right, and the sun's coming down, the, sun, the sunset, and it's like blasting through the middle of the street, and all like the lampposts are lit up with this nice warm glow, and I haven't had my camera, I've only had my phone. There's been so many like that. Those drives back home, when the sun is just like going down, and it like, and it's foggy as well, and it just lights up the, the, the surface, and you can see like the glow of the trees and stuff, and it's pink and all that, and I've, there's been so many times when I'm coming back home, and I haven't had my camera, and they're all like blurred shots on my phone, but I'm trying to take them out, out of the car. <laughs> and so yeah, probably sunsets on drives home. Question from Hot Barbecue. Excellent Instagram name. I like this question. What inspires your photography and filmmaking style? <laughs> if you've been following me since I first started Instagram, my style has changed uh, so many times. I mean, it's been highly saturated. It's been kind of the turquoise highlights and the orange shadows. It's heavily desaturated, it's been heavily faded all over the place, but at the moment, I think I, I like it how it is. It's, it's not too much editing that goes into it. So yeah, if I, if I look at my feed now, it's, I just love this kind of, it's obviously slightly desaturated, and there's heavy fade and there's some grain in there. So it's kind of got like the blue kind of highlights, but not too turquoisey, and it's got kind of that little bit of orange shadow. So what inspires me? This style. I mean, I mean, a lot of Instagrammers kind of have the same style now. It's it's like the faded blacks, kind of warm tones or cool tones, and desaturated. A lot of people are doing that right now. But I've kind of combined them, if you get what I mean. So it's I don't know. I'm just inspired by mood. Like every every photo I post, someone two, or two or three people comment mood or like mood on point and all that. So I think mood matters a lot to me. And if I can make it so, it's kind of magical, and you can get like not heavy blacks, but not, but but kind of faded blacks, but it, it, it looks like kind of vignette. I don't. Some of them I put vignettes on, but I just like that mood where the the main subject in the photo is the only thing, and the rest is like kind of enclosed by the darkness around it. If you <laughs> if you get what I mean. So this portrait of me here, so it's taken by my brother, but it's obviously my edit. So it's very like in focus and my face and everything. And then the back is just like this dreamy kind of milky, out of focus, kind of dark faded surround. So that's kind of my style. Obviously when I watch a lot of films, I'm inspired by how they grade and stuff. And that will come to a, another question in a minute, which is relevant if I can find the post again. Okay, so that's kind of relevant to another question I got. Um, this is from my brother, you guys know him, you've seen him in videos, J35mil. So let's see what his question is. Awesome shot. Oh, he actually, he actually asked this as well. What is the next lens you want and why? Okay, let's answer that first. Um, it'll probably be the 16 35 um, by Sony, the Zeiss lens um, F4. Mainly because I don't have like a, a primary vlogging lens at the moment. It, I've, only, I've only got the 20mm 1.4 and the 50mm and the 816 Sigma, but that's only APS-C size and it's crap at focus. so probably I, I'll, I'll, I, need, I actually need to get the 1635 <laughs> if I'm gonna do like vlogs again. Um, this, this, I love this question, right? Also, what are some of your favorite films from a cinematography standpoint? So the reason I've linked these two because I said about, I get inspired by kind of watching films and how they grade and stuff, and also the cinematography in the film. So, wow, cinematography standpoint, I mean, there's so many um, films of, with awesome, awesome cinematography. I don't know if you guys have seen, um, I love Drive um, with Ryan Gosling in. I can't remember the director right now. So it's quite a gory film, but it's so like, it's so chilled, right? It's, Ryan Gosling is, is awesome in it. Um, and the shots are amazing. You get these awesome like lights, out of focus blur and stuff. Driving shots, awesome, right? And another one, um, which is kind of kind of similar take is um, Nightcrawler with um, Jake Gyllenhaal. So that film is sick. I mean, the first, the first, the opening scene, it's just got Los Angeles with the moon lit, I think, and it just looks awesome. No Country of Men is another one. Incredible film, incredible cinematography. Really love that as well. Also, I, th I think The Shining. I mean, the opening, the opening scene in The Shining is where the overhead shot of the road slowly going in and, and the music comes in. Awesome. Also, when he's on the little pedal bike, the little boy in the film, and he's going through the hallway on that hideous carpet right that's a very that's awesome cinematography in that film so i do get my inspiration out of this 2001 odyssey space odyssey um fog in the open autumn was definitely inspired by that 
because I used long kind of shots um, where the camera wasn't really moving, but I used kind of the zoom in effect. Let's whiz back up to some of the others up here then. How do you edit your photos? Also, what presets do you use? Settings shown, please. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna go through a whole tutorial on how I edit, but let me, let me tell you one thing. On Instagram at the moment, all I see is presets, presets, presets. I'm selling my presets. One dollar for my presets, presets, presets. Ugh. I don't use any pre- I've got saved presets on Lightroom, obviously. But every photo I go through, I, I edit it from scratch. That, that's, believe it or not, I edit, I edit it from scratch. If I'm doing like a bulk of photos, I need them done quickly, like I do outside of YouTube, or I need to get a bunch of these like ready for ready for a video or something. If I've got like 10 these and edit them quickly, I will make a preset and just get them done. But when, I'm, when I've got a photo and I'm posting on Instagram, they're, they're all done by scratch. There's no presets there. So I edit my photos from scratch every single time. The reason why I don't use presets, so if I edit a photo, next one comes along, put the same preset on. I feel like I've, I've missed something out. I haven't gone through the whole kind of dynamic of that photo, of the next photo. So most things myself could have missed something out there when I've just put the preset on. I mean, you can obviously edit it after you put the preset on, but I think every photo is different. Not obviously if you're taking it, do, do it like that, but say if you're in the same place, every photo's got a different angle, every photo's got a different exposure and stuff, depending on the light. I, I just like doing it by scratch every single time, so that's that. <laughs> Liquid underscore lens. What's your favorite color? Damn, these, qu these questions are so hard. Don't know. <laughs> My favorite color for a long time was like blue. I think red as well. But at the moment, oh, I really don't know. Probably a warm colour. Camel colour. Like my camel crepes. <laughs> he, also, he also commented again, I'm dying to know. So now you know. Well, I didn't really answer, but anyway. <laughs> okay, question from my boy Alex.Dantonio. If I came out to the UK, somehow would you help me find a place to crash and travel with me to show me all the best spots? Of course, like, th this, this is what pleases me. Like, people want to people wanna get to know people through this Instagram, right? People want to come out and shoot. This is the awesome thing. Even though he's in New York State, all the way in America, right? He's he's inspired to come out and shoot me. This is awesome. Like, I'll show you a place to crash. You can even stay here if you want, and we can go out and shoot, bro. That's I, mean, I, th I think that's awesome. Instagram nowadays is connecting so many people in a way which which you couldn't do in the past. I think that's a very special thing. Right. Okay. Question from my girlfriend Hannah C Sutton. If you can only have one of these for life, what would it be? What would it, what would you choose? TTS or your Sony. So TTS, if you don't know what that is, that, that's a car, it's my car right now, Audi TTS, what I've got. <laughs> Fucking love that car, so... And my Sony, they're, they're, my, they're like my two kind of favourite things. Except for you, my girlfriend, obviously. Sony, I just got my Sony, so... Uh, and it's a camera, like, if I get rid of that, I wouldn't be able to take photos, but if I get rid of the car, I wouldn't be able to drive and take photos. I'd probably choose the camera, because a car, like, you can get lifts, transport. Pro I'll probably choose my Sony, my, my camera. I'll do two more. Okay, next question. This, this is a hard one. Okay, from C underscore Walshi. That's a cool, cool name. Uh, if you could only shoot one focal length, what would it be? Pff, like, pff, it's, it's, if you ask a photographer that, it's such a hard question to answer because there's so many variants out there. There's so many, like, different situations you, you'll find yourself in. And you either need a zoom lens, you either need a prime, you either need a wide focal length. I I'm loving this 20mm right now. I I'm like loving it, because it it's, not, it's not too wide, but it it's wide enough. It's a very nice focal length, you can get good landscapes out of it, and you can shoot street as well. A 20mm, I'm going to choose 20mm. Another question from Brahmastayafa. Brahmastayafa. Where do you want, where do you want for travelling? Try Southeast Asia. Smiley face. Southeast Asia, I mean... Um, my dad's from Malaysia. We used to go there every single year um, to Cebu down there near Borneo. Um, so I've been there a lot, but before like, I got into all this photography stuff. Southeast Asia is awesome. Singapore I've been to. I really, actually, I really like to go to Singapore. Bali, I would like to go there. Probably Bali first. Yeah, I, I would really like to go to Southeast Asia. Okay, th this, this, let's do one more. One more question from Snappy Lens. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received and that you tried to live by? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, these questions. The thing that, the main thing that, um, but what, in my opinion, I think you've got to focus in life is that if you've got a passion, there should be nothing stopping you for going, for going for it. I've heard that a lot, just, just around generally on Instagram, on YouTube, 
everyone says it right. And I, I think that's I think that's the best piece of advice you can ever get. If you've got a passion, if you know what you want to do, you see yourself doing it, you have this vision that you want to become this person, that you want to become successful in doing what you love and all this, uh, go for it. I, I think that's very, I think that, well, it's just, it's just cutthroat, it's just straight to the point. Just go for it, mate. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just, just, just go for it. I think that's probably the best piece of advice I've, I've received and I, I try to kind of put it in my opinion to tell other people that. Um, if you just, if you just got something that you really want to do, you're afraid to kind of go out there and do it, just, just fucking do it, you know what I mean? Just, just do it. That, that's probably the best piece of advice I've ever gotten and I'm gradually doing it now. So it, it, it's, it's awesome. That's all I've got to say about that. That pretty much does my question and answers for today. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for watching if you put it in 4K as well. I hope it looks very nice and crispy, nice quality. Um, also guys, thank you for your questions on Instagram. If you've got any more questions uh, you want to ask me, hit them down below in the comments um, or watch some other Q&As I've done. I've done t two now. This will be the third to go on the channel. So yeah, thanks very much for your questions guys and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>